well. Here we are. It's nearly at the end of this fact finding. Um, we're wondering what the judge is going to come up with on Thursday, and we're wondering if she's going to do the right thing. But whether she does the right thing or in certain people's books the wrong thing, it's going to be difficult for her either way. If she does the right thing by the, the people, the public, the children, um, all the people affected by this, all the children who are the victims of this, of this case, and we do believe there are many victims, and they haven't been, they haven't been rescued from the situations that they're in. If she does the best she can for them, then obviously she's going to get into trouble with certain shadowy people ranged around her in, in these places and in higher places. And so it's difficult for her. So I mean, um, basically, are they still got no legal representation in there at the moment? No, they haven't. And um, this has been one of the frustrating things for me because I'm conscious as, as every day goes by, more is yeah. happening in that courtroom yeah. that we actually could benefit from knowing about and hearing. And yet, we haven't had a single syllable right. fed back to us. You know, when I say we, I'm still, in my mind, representing the mother. Yeah. Whether or not and formally I'm representing her, you know, I'm concerned about her and I'm concerned about the children. Yeah. So, of course, we need to know what's being said, which could be in their interest and could not be in their interest. And what about the Russian embassy? I thought the Russian, Russian embassy, embassy was involved. Russian embassy went in last week with the grandparents when it was the turn of the grandparents to give their witness evidence. The Russian embassy went in. Yeah. And again, I should be trying to check up that that they, you know, my last time I saw him, I said, please try and get in there yeah. on Thursday the 12th. Yeah. Because obviously that's when she will deliver her verdict. So they haven't managed to sort out any legal representation either? Well, it's, it's all sorts of difficulties. They're, yeah. they're away in a very remote remote place. They've got no email, no Skype. They feel nervous about phoning yeah. people from where they are because, you know, it's easy to trace locations of mobile phones. Yeah. It's under those circumstances, and they've got very little money. So under those circumstances, it's very difficult to arrange lawyers yeah. and for them to trust the lawyers enough at that distance, not being able to meet the lawyers. Yeah, but I mean, even if they didn't them. trust the lawyers, we still would have got well, some is, information. There is from one the lawyer that I kept saying, look, please just, you know, because there's just nothing, there's nothing there, better. Yeah. There's somebody who can go in and just listen yeah. and take notes. Yeah. Please. I've put that message to her many times, but yeah. whether or not she's done it. Because whatever happens, I'm not in touch with that lawyer, or I've tried to get in touch with him, and he doesn't seem to want to speak to me for some reason. So I don't know what's right. going on. So there's no representation, and then no, no, it's certainly not representation. On and, and, and the best we can hope for is listening ears in there. Yeah. But in any case, the case is practically over anyway. So yeah. you know, in a couple of days after that, she could get a transcript. But again, whether the reality of what was said matches up with the text of the transcript, that's yeah. a, another thing you don't know. Well, that's right. Yeah. You hope it's the same, but you don't know. You know, certain bits could be eliminated or cleaned up. The yeah. judges have discretion to to um, doctor the transcripts. Yeah. To make it look. And, um, what they want to you know when the mum uh, ran away from the house when the grandparents were there. Yes, yes. Was that, was that after the videos had been leaked or...? Yes, I mean the videos were leaked sort of earlier in February and yeah. then on the 10th of February the case went to the, before this judge um, on an application from Barnet Council yeah. regarding the sudden deluge of publicity for the judge to make an order for some of that to be obviously damned. So, yeah. um, there was an order against the press and media from continuing to publish this case insofar as the press and media were concerned, but they, they haven't been yeah. particularly. But for anybody, for Google, for Facebook, oh, for um, YouTube, you know, any of the social media, yeah. we're also under this injunction not to put, allow any stuff to continue to circulate. Right, right. And then there was also an, an order for the two parties that are most chief suspects of having been responsible for the the internet leaks and all the information that's been swirling around, that yeah. they should, by a certain date that week, which was, happened to be Friday the 13th, 4 o'clock, yeah. they were to remove anything that they'd put up. Right. Um, the police arrived 24 hours earlier yeah. and attempted to arrest the mother. Yeah. 
Um, they're also having been through third parties. Um, hints that the Chief Mackenzie friend was also in danger of being arrested if he stayed around. So I told yeah. her, you know, I've, I've, I can read the writing on the wall, you better yeah. get, get out. Yeah. And so by the end of that week, even though they still had till the Friday the 13th, 4 o'clock to, you know, to do what they could to put the matters right, yeah. um, they were already both left the country. Right, police right. Were after them. I think the police in that in that instance were out of order. They yeah. should have let the whole thing roll till Friday, which was according to the judge's order. Yeah. So that's one more black mark notched up against the police. Has also, anyone heard anything from the kids yet? From the kids, from yeah. the children. Well, I hope that sometime this week the grandparents will have visited them. I don't know if, if they're going to be them. There was talk that the grandparents would go and see them this week. Yeah. So I hope that's happened or is, is happening even as we are speak. You, are you still in contact with the grandparents and yes. Abraham? And yes, yes. Well, with Abraham and the mother, not only when they manage to get to a phone or feel that they can can phone. Yeah. And not very, not every day by any means. So it's a bit sporadic, but at the same time, you know, we. Take, we we do get into contact. I think they've been talking to um, Sabine in Europe or wherever she is because yeah. it's easier to do that than it is to phone people like me. Yeah. Probably my phone's been listened to and all sorts. Of. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, it's all been very trying, really. Yeah. And um, I really don't know, as I say, which way the cookie crumbles at this stage and what's going to happen on Thursday. Right. But as I say, the judge could could do some of the right things. She could return the children to the grandparents, which is what the public are currently screaming at her to do. Yeah. And I hope she will do that. Because whatever happens, you know, with the other parties in the case, I think by now, if there's question marks about the father, there's question marks about the mum's boyfriend. Yeah. Um, then obviously the next candidates in line are, are going to be the grandparents. Yeah. And they are eminently suitable to look after these children, take them away, and, and help to re them to restore their minds after this terrible yeah. ordeal. I mean, um, we've seen like the kids have said they wanted to stay with their carer that they was with. Um... That was the first carer, but since yeah. then they've been moved, I think, twice. But I mean, so if the kids, if the kids are asking to be somewhere other than a family member, wouldn't that go? Well, I, I think the children's the children's wishes should be taken into account, yes. Yeah. You know, if, the, if they genuinely prefer to, to remain in England, to, to be brought up by in foster care... Yeah, but I mean, even getting, if they do say that, I mean, can we trust that that's uh, their, their actual feelings or...? Uh, without somebody independent actually <laughs> going to... Yeah. You see, this is the problem, you see, because we, we get everything filtered through the local authorities looking after them and the police looking yeah. at the back of it as well. So, who can we really say is actually representing... I mean, for me, the whole, a lot hinges on how the grandparents find their grandchildren this week. Right, 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 yeah. And there were definite concerns in January. In December, when the grandparents first came over, yeah. the children were still quite chirpy and Lively cheerful. And By yeah. January, they were quite depressed and quite, you know, not giving eye contact to the grandparents, nervous about taking sweets or yeah. fruits that the Actually grandparents normal had brought, around them, yeah. And not being natural at all and, and looking yeah. quite depressed and anxious. Yeah. So if that, if that has escalated two months later, then I think there's great cause for concern. Yeah, yeah. So I think the grandparents, they do know their, those children very well. Yeah, they've watched yeah. them grow up, they've visited them. They've, children have visited their grandparents every year, yeah. sometimes twice a year, I gather. And so they know them very, very well. Yeah, yeah. And obviously I'm happy to see them. And yes, yeah. oh yes, yes. And when they, as I say, when the grandparents first arrived in December, the children went straight onto their laps, you yeah, know, yeah. for a cuddle. They're excited sat to there. see them, yeah. Yeah, but that was all different in January. Yeah. So something's yeah. going on with them. Well, something's yeah. been said to them, obviously yeah. they've been threatened or... It's a terrible situation, isn't it? Because obviously it's all out on the net now. Everyone knows yeah. who they are. Well, I think they should be right away from it. See, I mean, that's an argument for not keeping them here. Quite yeah, possibly, yeah. Well, exactly, yeah. You know, for their best interests, it's better for them to be right away. Out of the country and with their grandparents and trying to get yeah. on with their lives again. That's it. I can't see them staying in care really myself. Because, um, no, because they'll... You obviously know, there's it, so much public attention course, on it now. and yes. They're never going to be in a situation where... No. This is it. So, from their best interest, I think they, that's I, I just hope she's she she seems to have been in past cases 
more on the side of the children and families than some of the judges in there. So yeah. I still hope that she will come good. And then um, what are you saying about the mum? She's got no phone near her by her or internet? Well, no, or? she has got... She, she, they're in some sort of remote place, I guess. So right. there's no internet. Well, they can get to an internet cafe in the local town. Because I find it quite surprising that they haven't actually come out with a speech themselves, you know, since it's all blown onto the net, you know, um, a little statement from themselves. I know we've had the grandparents, um, but there hasn't been much from Abraham, has there, or, or the mum, to um, clarify the situation from their point of view. I can't say, I can't really comment about that. Yeah. Um, but if you're already under some injunction or the threat of arrest not to speak or say anything. Yeah. Um, then obviously. Obviously, you don't then sort of. Start blabbering your mouth. Yeah, and exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's a tricky situation then. It is. Yeah, yeah. It is. I think probably when it's all over, they, pro they probably will say something about it. Sure they will. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, then there's the next stage, which could be appealing or could be putting in a counterclaim. So the, this thing with the dolls and the blood on it and that, that was Sabine's idea, was it? Or someone I hated that idea. Suggested it to Sabine. No, it wasn't, it wasn't Sabine's. I think it's somebody else. But suggested Sabine it picked to it up Sabine and, and, yeah. Sabine, sometimes, you know, she thinks anything for publicity and doesn't think terribly hard about it because she's very much a yeah. publicity person. It's I said straight what's away, going no, this, on, is, um, this is awful, this is tasteless, this is offensive. Well, yeah, because it's like what's been happening with the babies being cut up, isn't it? It's a similar... Yeah, but I mean, I know it's not the, the way to do it. It's not no, the way to no, do no. it. No, um, no, you know, I was imagining people cutting up babies and putting fake blood in them as... I couldn't no, see no, myself no. doing it. No, no, no. no some no, things no. are in good taste and there's yeah. some things which are just appalling and grotesque. So we're waiting for our next uh, course of action at the moment. There's no, nothing planned at the moment. We're going to wait to see what happens on Thursday. <laughs> we are rather <laughs> sort of, uh, you know, feeling we don't know. And then we're going to see what's the best thing to do from there. But obviously, is there going to be a problem if we start turning up at Hampstead? I would say... We should we should perhaps do an action, but away from the town. Yeah. And we should wait to see how the public opinion comes out. Yeah. In in the next few days, because there's a certain I think there's a certain merit in letting things sort of settle down yeah. and letting people digest. And again, I I say there's a lot more research to do. There's a there's a lot more. Yeah. On all of this this whole situation and there's also what the public can do is is press for a new inquiry into the whole thing if that's what they feel strongly about yeah um, but I would say let's play it by ear because I always think we have to whatever we do we have to bring the public with us we can't sort of no we you know it's crucial that everybody everyone's involved now aren't they because it's all over the net and people's it, it become involved do, it, it doesn't help that. if we don't if we have war a war with the public going on when we've already got if you like a war with the satanists you see what i mean yeah um so obviously we, they can do donation as well I, I got an email when i signed the petition oh, to, to donate i yes, mean donations i mean i'm where, do, where does that money go to once it's the donated? Money go, the monies would go to to help mount counter claims and counter court actions. If you know, if, if Sabine, right. for example, has to defend herself, right, or if she's forced to run around yeah. for months and months. I mean, she does. She does. She's seventy years old. She she's given lots and lots of her personal wealth away, such yeah. as it was to to fighting all these causes over many years. Yeah. So and she's she's now a pensioner, and she's. She's in a sticky situation, so yeah. you know it would help her a bit. But also, I have a general fund to help mums generally in the family courts. You know, so that work has to go on as well. Yeah. You know, take my eye slightly off, off that. Yeah, off I think everyone did recently. for a split second, didn't they? Because because of this taking precedence. Yeah, but it was so shocking, wasn't it? All of those other situations it? are still very important as well. Pressing and agonising with people feeling the. They need some sort of help, and they. Yeah. Where do they get it from? Yeah. So that's where we can possibly come in. And Everyone tends to. Eat. Also, apart from anything else, I, I could do with some administrative help in trying to harness all all the information that's come in yeah. just in these last few weeks while this case has been going on. Yeah. I have a lot of members of the public 
not a lot, but a significant number of members of the public yeah. passing me information about this case, right, which okay. has not yet been looked at by the police, but right. which does seem to be contributing to um, the fleshing out the allegations. Is that way. people that live in the area and maybe have gone to the school previously or their kids have gone to the school? Or? Yes, it's, it's people who have been involved with the school or, or yeah. lo local people right, saying okay. something. And again, that needs to be somehow put together, yeah. sorted, sifted. Yeah. Then we have to find independent authorities, perhaps, perhaps one of these anti-child abuse panels or judges that have come up to, to, to head up what's called the People's Child Abuse Inquiry. Yeah, I made yeah. a good contact with, with um, John Bullock the other day. John, yeah. John Cooper. John Cooper. Right. And, um, John Bullock. Um, who, who heads up the People's Tribunal into Child Abuse. Right, right, right. And I think somebody like that or Mike Mansfield yeah. could have some of this information so them, so and start collecting, you know, the, the evidence for substantiating the children's allegations that the police have not yet examined. Yeah. Uh, so has that's Sabine got any more response from uh, Justice Goddard's? Um, I don't know whether... Justice Goddard's come back yet. I, yeah. think, I think if she had, we would have heard about it, and I haven't heard about it, so I assume yeah, yeah. she hasn't. <laughs> uh, Sabine reacts regularly to all these public figures. I don't know if Theresa May ever answered her, yeah. her email late at night, early in, in February. Right. Uh, Bernard Hogan Howe, the Chief Commissioner of the Metropolitan Police, I think yeah. whether he's come back. I, you know, I just don't know. Yeah, how many he was on the radio the other day, wasn't he, yeah. saying they haven't got enough staff. To do with yes. this well, you see, this, this is why I say, you know, we have got an electronic society, yeah. and with, you know, clever electronic people, you know, high-tech people, yeah. it should be possible to not to have too many staff and still to have quite an efficient um, investigation and information yeah. gathering yeah. department yeah. on all these cases. It's a question I mean, of whether they've got the will to do it. But I mean, that, like the police are involved in this case, and <coughs> from the looks of it, it's, well, a, it's an open and shut case, isn't it? You have to say because of their bullying, because of their breaking their procedures. Yeah. You have to say they, they must be in some way anxious for this not to come out. Or, yeah, yeah. Um, they're, they're, which, they're either which involved the question or as to whether someone higher up. Are involved, as the yeah. Children have indicated one or two. Yeah. And it's the same in the Hollybrig case up in Scotland. Right. Yeah, you know, because there were one or two police, a local sheriff and a senior police officer involved in, in that yeah. case. Um, that's why it didn't come out when Holly reported it years ago. Yeah. And it's never been investigated. It's too no, many no. high up people. Um, Do you still have contact with Anne? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, informally, you know, sort of yeah. not in a campaigning. I mean, they, they're under an injunction from, from the same judge, which was placed yeah. on them two or three years ago, mm -hmm. for not to continue, to, they mustn't continue to publicly campaign at all. Right, okay. You know, because that's that's the condition on which Holly stays safe and remains with her mum. Yeah, yeah. So, that was Judge Crawford. Yeah. And so, you know, I think we've got to com campaign collectively for all these situations, all these cases. Yeah. In the meantime, I think there's quite a lot more people in Scotland, campaigners in Scotland, than they, they used to be, which I'm quite pleased about. Yeah. Who, who know that they've got to deal with the problem on the Scottish front. You know, where we deal with some of these terrible cases down south, they've got yeah. problems up there. And then there's the European front, <laughs> which is, you know, the other countries where there are instances of this going on. Yeah. So well, it's, it's worldwide now, isn't it? It's worldwide. Because but, of the internet, you know. You know, I think it's worldwide, but there are particular, what I call, um, child abuse black spots. Or, yeah, yeah. Um, so there are ca certain councils in this country that are worse than others. Or yeah. Well, I mean, the, and the I would flag up the the places where child services are being run reasonably properly. Yeah. And get them on board to yeah. try and help counteract some of the corruption in other in other areas. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's we, where we, we are. We press on. Yeah. Um, public awareness is growing public awareness will continue to grow. We've got a fantastic rally coming up, which I think is probably, I hope, going to be our biggest anti-child abuse rally yet on the 11th of April. End of um, April, yeah. End of April. No, 11th of April. 11th Saturday of April. the 11th of April. Okay, right. And it's in central London. Start off around 10 o'clock in Trafalgar Square. 10 o'clock, After okay. about an hour of um, assembling and mustering, yeah. go down Whitehall and to Downing Street. Any, any famous faces going to be there? From the conspiracy um, scene or conspiracy scene. <laughs> the troopers 
movement. But there were people from the truth movement. And yeah. Yes, and, and lots of the key activists. And Is anyone lined up at the moment? To, to speak or yeah, to, to speak. I should imagine um, we'll all take the microphone. And yeah, yes, yeah. You know, Bill Maloney going to be yeah, there? Rush, I, think so. I hope so, yes. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I think it's going to be the certainly the, the big one this spring. Yeah. And it's also going to happen just before the election, so we, we need to influence the electoral process as well. Because what we need in Parliament are less politicians and less party people, Yeah. but more just normal people, decent have, people. Have you got a website for that to, uh, so people can log on to and find out the details and the meeting points and be what, a about rally? The, about the rally? Yeah. Yes, if people go on Facebook and they go onto a website called United We Stand, which is Brenda McNamara's site, right. Mumsy, her popular name. Yeah, yeah. They'll find all the details. Right, okay. And that's it, really. Hopefully we can get quite a few people down to it. I think so. And I think it needs to be, you know, quite a good turnout on that day. Yeah, Make a strong yeah. statement to the public that we're, we're going on with this. Yeah, we've got to help the kids, haven't we? Absolutely. Yeah, so enough, enough is enough. Enough is enough. Well, I think you're doing a brilliant job. <laughs> it's OK. It's a bit of a hard road to tread. Yeah. And yet, it's lovely just to stand here. Every time I stand here, which I've been doing now for, this is the ninth day and there's two more days to go. Mm -hmm. I meet some absolutely wonderful, great people. Yeah. And also hear some very sad stories. Yeah, yeah. I'm about to bring out a video today of the lovely young woman who was, grew up in the Barnet area. Right, okay. Who spoke very passionately about the horrors of her childhood. I don't know if you were there at the time. You were hovering somewhere in the background. Yeah, early. yeah. Her name is Kate, Katie, so that's coming out today. Right, okay. And I think that will make a very big impression on people. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's very articulate. Very, um, very, it's very moving. Yeah, you know, yeah. People watching that will cry. Well, it's good to get the stories out and, and yeah. show people what's really going on. Mm -hmm. You know, Absolutely. because um, it's all hidden, isn't it? And um, well, it's all hidden. This needs to be not hidden anymore. No, no. Um, certainly, the, the the worst aspects of it are a bit difficult for people to take on board. Yeah. And yet. You know, we've we've had over the centuries atrocities, wars, terrible massacres, dreadful political leaders, kings, yeah. murderous kings, and sadistic, you know, public executions in this country, beheadings every, every yeah. few days in this capital city of ours, tortures and yeah. inquisition. You know, let's let's just take a take a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it is a hard the, subject, isn't it? More of the nasty it, stuff. We've got to face up to it, haven't we? We've got to face up to it, and too much of... I, I don't want there to be any cruelty in this world at all. Ideally, no. I, would, I want all cruelty to be banished from this world. Yeah. And yet, we, we will only banish it when people rise up and say, we don't tolerate it any longer, so we've got to know about it. So it's yeah. a painful moment. But if we go, it's, it's like jumping into a cold swimming pool or something. Yeah, <laughs> if, yeah, yeah. if you hover on the brink, and put a toe in, and yeah. it goes on, the ordeal goes on for, you've got to actually plunge in and get really cold, and yeah. then find afterwards that things are better. Yeah. You're actually enjoying your swim. You, you've got to face your dangers, haven't you? And, uh, yeah, you have to. We have and to then face overcome it. And That's it. And if we all do that together, it makes it easier as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, because we can come together, and think about all sorts of things that we can change for the better and get the people really using their heads and using their their hearts and their passions yeah. to, to improve things. And um, we don't need these people abusing babies and killing killing babies and children. No, no, and that's enough now, it. isn't it? Do not Too much it. now. And we do not accept it, we do not tolerate it. We need the politicians on board, we need the papers, Everybody we need the troopers, we need everyone, don't we? Everyone on board. And it's, it's quite shocking that, that they're not all here today or they haven't really well, got on board. Know, I, I never blame people for not being there because, you know, people have got lives, people have got work, people have got this and that. Yeah. And as long as a few good people, new people, I, I meet new people every time I come on the streets. Yeah. For me, that's the best thing. Yeah. I just love love it when I meet a really good new person and they tell yeah. me what they've been doing and what they feel strongly about. And they want to help and they they've got some special skill or talent that they yeah, can bring. Yeah. It's, it's, it's lovely all of that. So. Yeah, yeah, and you learn something new. And I, it encourages me because I know that most people really are good. Yeah. Really, and all they need is just to, just a little bit of a nudge. I won't take up any more of your time because Thank you. everyone's pretty waiting to speak to you as well. But I appreciate doing. Well, waiting to speak to me. I, I, We're going to be packing up now. It's yeah. after two. I appreciate you doing the other another video with me. 
Even, even our hearts yeah. are full of self-interest. Because you're very easy to talk to, and yeah, some yeah. people are help, help the words to flow. So.